everybody, D. Williams here, and you are listening to episode number 12 of the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. Let's get fired up. Welcome to Staffing Startup.tv, the podcast that gives you direct access to the world's leading recruitment, staffing, and startup experts. D. Williams speaks with amazing thought leaders, venture capitalists, and technology trendsetters about their journey, challenges, and successes related to recruitment, staffing, and hiring. Now, here's your host, D. Williams. Hey, everybody, this is D. Williams, and welcome to the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. Podcast where we get fired up about recruitment and staffing. That's right. This podcast is all about the ins and outs, the ups and downs and all arounds of finding and nurturing and securing the most exceptional talent for companies all across the globe. And today we are diving right into one of my favorite segments, Driven Insights. Today's guest, they're already in the industry. They're coming to bring some insight and some guidance as to how AI fits into recruitment and sourcing and staffing and, and all the different challenges that are taking place in the industry today. I'm talking industry insight. I'm talking about some fired up industry energy. Wow. I said, y'all know my energy is flowing, right? <laughs> Some fired up energy today. I want to introduce the director of talent acquisition at Sodexo, Scott Sherman. Hey, Scott. Hello. Hello. Good morning or good <laughs> afternoon, I should say now. Good afternoon, right? How are you today? I'm really excited about you being here. I'm doing really well. I'm excited about being here as well. And I'm, I'm absolutely loving your energy right now. It's really <laughs> I- awesome. Look, I was going to say, I hope it's not overwhelming because sometimes people are like, whoa, but I feel like we got to get fired up about, about recruitment and staffing. I think we're in that space and time. What do you think? Absolutely. This is a great time for recruiting and staffing. Everybody needs us. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity where, you know, everybody's seeking talent and we're right there to solve the problem and help save the day. It's awesome. Definitely. Well, first, I want to the audience to know a little bit more about you and a little bit about your background and what you do. One of the reasons why Scott is here today, typically we talk to startups, but, you know, in this particular segment... We really get fired up about what's actually going on within the, the, the recruiting departments within companies across the globe. They use us. They use our skills, right? Our network, our knowledge. And so we want to be able to connect with them to make sure that we're supporting them in the best way possible and that we're understanding how we can be true partners versus just companies that are throwing bodies over there, right? They, they are looking for something so much more. And then, you know, really to tap into Scott's knowledge, because he's also, and he's going to talk to you about this in a minute, but he's also worked in the staffing industry before. So he brings a couple of different perspectives to this mix, which I'm excited about. So Scott, can you tell our audience here a little bit about your background? You bet. Well, right now I'm a director of talent acquisition at Sodexo. I oversee all of our recruit, or, or uh, not all of our recruitment, a big portion of our recruiting in terms of anything that is in our facilities, engineering, and technical services uh, across the U.S. And also our strategic sourcing team, a lot of our diversity recruitment, and uh, college recruitment. So, but before Sodexo, I worked uh, for Volt Services Group, a staffing company that's uh, pretty big on the West Coast, although they are an international company. Um, I got my start working for Volt right out of pretty much right out of college, hiring people for Microsoft and Redmond, Washington. Um, it was a great way to start because it was really just kind of jump full in. They had a really good onboarding and training program. And uh, from there, I've, I've worked kind of in and out of Volt, but I also worked for a startup kind of spinoff company uh, that was developing the bridges you use to do voice conferencing. And they were the leaders in IP and I started up their recruiting function, coming right out of the agency world. Uh, but it was a great experience. I uh, went back to Volt for a while and then landed at Sodexo. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. So you've seen both ends of the, perspe- of the perspective of the spectrum. And um, I, I guess the, the first thing I want to say is, oh, the joys and pains of hiring exceptional talents, right? You've looked at it from, from a staffing perspective and now you're internal. 
StaffingStartup.tv is your number one source for news, information, and live interviews specific to the growth and success of niche recruiting and staffing agency business owners, staffingpreneurs. Can you give us a little bit of of feedback or or some advice on kind of the differences of working from a staffing perspective externally supporting clients versus being on the inside and like, how does that, how has that shifted your thought process around hiring? Absolutely. So when I was working in, you know, in in staffing before it ever worked in-house as a recruiter, you know, I didn't, a lot of that was you had these awesome candidates and you were trying to meet the needs of different hiring managers, but you didn't necessarily think so. You didn't know the inner workings of that company as well. So you had to try and pull that out. You tried to, had to try and learn that, but you were never sitting in that seat. And so there was a lot of gaps that you didn't always know. And so you sometimes questioned, well, why did they do this? Or why did that happen when I submitted this candidate and they didn't select them? And, you know, you just kept doing your best to get them what they wanted. You know, you, you, you know, when I was at Volt, I think one of the biggest things that we were good at was developing those hiring manager partnerships mm-hmm. and through those relationships in, in, within with the hiring managers and understanding their business. But we weren't sitting there day to day with them. Yeah. But the other we brought that value of the talent market, the candidate market, and uh, we, we we would be successful, but we always didn't quite understand the internal workings. And so when I went to work in-house, I learned that it was a lot more that goes into selection than I had realized working in staffing. There's, you know, sometimes there's things that you pick up in the interview that I had a director of HR say, if you see something in the interview, a behavior, a skill set that doesn't quite look as strong or a competency, magnify that times 100. And that's what you're going to get in job performance. Wow. So it filled in a lot of gaps for me because I was like, no wonder sometimes those candidates didn't get through. Everything looked great, but there might have been one thing like a behavioral thing or a competency that you couldn't have picked up. Nobody could have picked up until three interviews in. But from a company perspective, they're thinking a 10-year employee sometimes or a three to five year minimum, right? And so it's a little bit different decision than you might have been thinking about when you're just trying to get the best possible person to them to interview. Yeah, definitely. And it's so interesting that you said that. First of all, I think that was like great advice because a lot of times, you know, especially from a staffing perspective, we're so eager to fill that position that we want to overlook those little small things, you know, and it's like, you know, but you you don't, re- you, you have to accentuate those. So I like the idea of like bringing it out times 100. It's like, whoa, where's your gut, right? You got to go inside and go into the gut. So do you find that, um, so when you guys, so you brought up a, a, a first, a major point, you said, you know, when you're on the staffing side, you don't really get to understand or know the, the, the inside job of what's going in, on inside of a company. When you guys work with staffing agencies, now that you've lived in both sides, both sides of the spectrum, how do you ensure that that agency partner um, has the information and the tools that they need to be successful in helping you guys fill positions like that? Right. And so now we generally try and include some type of conversation with the hiring manager, mm-hmm. but, the, but the recruiter or the recruitment manager or director also really trying to kind of fill in some of those gaps. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I know that we heard this in the pre-posting call when you were talking to them, but some of the things that you may not have understood is that we've had a history in this market or we've hired candidates from this background before and we had, you know, either good experience or a bad experience. So really trying to bring that full picture to that agency partner. Um, we have worked with them not as much at, at Sodexo, although we have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when we're bringing in an agency, it's, you know, really a, a unique situation, a difficult market to recruit in. And so we, we really want to share, look, we've gone down this road. We've tried these approaches and, you know, this hasn't worked or we've, you know, we've already talked with candidates with, you know, a background in manufacturing and that didn't apply as well to this particular market. So we try and bring them up to speed. When I was working in the, the startup uh, spinoff environment, we at the time, and this is going to date me a little bit, but we were looking for C++, Unix, Solaris, engineers, application wow. like, and I knew our technical stack. I, I, I sat in on interviews. I watched the coding interviews. And, and I had really had to learn 
what the feedback meant from engineers. They would tell me, well, this person isn't smart. And they'd be like, what does that mean? They're not smart. Well, when I sat in on their interviews, I realized what they meant. They just meant that this person would try and solve a problem and then they just stopped. They wouldn't look at it from multiple angles. They couldn't get outside of the box or they might solve it in the most optimal way, but then they couldn't solve it any other way, like a lesser way. And right. so I would then say, look, you know, when I worked, I was a one, one person recruiting team there and I needed a lot of agency partners at the time. I mean, I was sourcing, I was hiring engineers, but I had way more volume than I could handle. So I had to bring them in and say, you know, this is what we mean when we say that they didn't interview well, they didn't solve problems well. They, they would, if they were writing some code, they wouldn't look at the entire application and all the source code. That code might break everything else, even though it was written wonderfully. Right. <laughs> so, so really kind of filling them in, in our culture and our design environment um, and some of the problems we were trying to solve. And then honing them in, because a C++ Unix Solaris programmer at the time, that could have been so much. I mean, that could have been a u user interface. It could have been, um, you know, it could have been in the application layer. Um, it could have not been in a Solaris environment at all. But so we were, you know, I was really trying to bring them in. Look, if they're in, you know, in the application layer, but they're writing stuff that's going to, you know, go down through APIs, interface with our hardware, you know, bringing them into that environment so that they could hone in on their searching too. Yeah. That, that was what I, I had to spend a lot of time doing. But I had to know that myself to not only source and recruit in that space, yeah. but how can you bring a partner on if you can't get them honed in where they're supposed to source? Otherwise, they're going to be out there searching all over the world. Yeah. I mean, and they're not bringing you that niche that you're really looking for. That's exactly right. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I really teach niche. I teach that like, so like almost they say I preach it. I don't like that term, but it's like the more, you know, your market, the, the more valuable you are to all parties. And that's what you're basically saying at the core. So from a, a newbie perspective, I have a lot of professionals that are listening in on this call. And they're thinking, I want to get into recruitment and staffing. I want to be a true value. Um, but my biggest question, the question I get all the time, is like, how do we get in contact with companies internally? So I've got to ask two questions, two separate questions. So the first question is, um, when people are typically reaching out to you guys for to become a partner, and I know you don't use partners a lot, but when they do, like, what are some of the ways and what are some of the things that they have done to reach out to you and to become successful in that and in, in making that match? Right. Because I'm sure you get a lot of calls. So that's the first one. The second one, how often do people reach out to you? And then the third one <laughs> is um, what are things that you feel like you just should not do when you're attempting to reach out to someone to do business? Because I think this is a part of the conversation that people don't talk about often. Right. So the first thing is, is if, especially if you're going niche, I would understand, you know, what is that niche and where do those people interact? Mm -hmm. So I'll give an example. Um, one of my times, one, one of my uh, business lines at Volt that I supported was the banking industry. And I was really, I, I thought at the time, this is before kind of the mortgage collapse and all of that banking was, it was like you could not find people to work at banks. It was the most amazing employee market, candidate market for banking you've ever seen, which, so I got involved with what are the bank, where do the bankers go? What do they do? Where do they, I had to become their peer. And I think that's the thing you got to think about, become their peer. So I would go and I would, I met, you know, it was the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis Clubs, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and, you know, understand where those commercial bankers were and where, and then I got to know their environment. And then, you know, when I went to talk with HR or I went to talk with whoever was that decision maker that would sign on an agency, I was being presented as an industry expert, a subject matter expert in in banking. And I came, so I kind of came in with an introduction, you know, the commercial bank head of commercial banking might say, we need to work with Scott at Volt. He really knows this market. And so then HR is like, yes, yes, we need someone to help us here. And this, our business is recommending this person. So let's talk to him. Right. That got me in. Now, now I'm not saying to go around HR because HR is going to be your partner. Right. But if you already come with some kind of street credibility, 
they're going to be like, okay, the business is recommending this person. And now when you come in and start to interact with HR and they see you as a partner, you're, you've already paved your way right, right there. So now within, within our company, I'm much within Sodexo today. I'm much more, I'm, I'm much more, I go out and find an agency if we're going to need them because we're so specialized when we need an agency, I'll look and I'll try and find those niche agencies. And, and cause usually it's a unique scenario and the business line facilities management, it's just not something really people specialize in. <laughs> exactly. So I'll go find them. So if you also have some type of way that someone can find you on the web, that they can find you on LinkedIn, that shows your specialty, that's the other piece. Like for some of the big, you know, a big company like Sodexo, we're usually it's okay. We're in this situation. Uh, someone like myself or, you know, someone on my team is going to have to go out and identify some agencies. And we really got to do a kind of through search. Yeah. Now I do get reached out to a lot by agency partners. And a lot of times I'll just reply back and say, Hey, thank you for reaching out. We're not in a spot where we need, a, a, you know, outside assistant right now assistance, but I'll keep your information. The thing that I would recommend in those is just share what your specialty is. A lot of times I don't know what it is. I'm just really busy. And I, I, I'm, I respect that person for reaching out and I want to at least get back to them. But if they just send a quick reply and says, great, you know what? This is what I specialize in. So if you're going to save my contact information, save it here. I'm accounting and finance. I'm software engineers. I'm construction. Whatever your niche is, share that. Yeah, that was well, awesome. Keep going. Yeah. Was there another part to it? I can't remember. No, no, question. no, you answered. And actually, what I want to do is I want to take a break and then we're going to come back and talk really, really, really quickly about the AI space and talent search and AI, because I know that's something you're passionate about. So we're here with Scott Sherman and, and give us one moment. We'll be right back. Stick around. Attention, all computer and information technology professionals. It is estimated that the business of placing contract technology workers is at least a billion dollar industry. And today... We want to show you how you can become a supplier of tech talent to companies all over the world. That's right. You can put your IT colleagues on contract and build them out. It's not rocket science and is a great additional income. Let Staffingpreneurs Academy show you how to start your very own IT niche recruitment, staffing, and consulting business. Learn more at staffingpreneursacademy.com slash IT. That's staffing, P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S, academy.com, slash IT, right now. And we're back with the one and only Scott Sherman, who's the Director of Talent Acquisition at Sodexo. Now, he serves on an executive leadership team developing and implementing industry-leading strategies to source and hire top talent and and ultimately a diverse workforce. So, Scott, like, do you do a lot of diversity hiring as well in, in the position that you're in? Absolutely. Well, diversity recruitment is interwoven into everything we do. Whenever we source on a job, we are going to leverage our diversity external organizations that we partner with, mm -hmm. diversity search strings, you know, colleges and universities, whatever we are sourcing, we are going to interlay, interlay diversity sourcing within that. It's just anytime we go to market, it's there's always a diverse outreach portion to what we're doing. And the, the reason I asked is because I hear uh, just as I travel and talk to different companies, that's one of the areas, especially in IT, um, you hear there's like one percent, you know, uh, of of diverse candidates in that space. Right. Um, uh, you hear that a lot on when you start going up the corporate ladder on the executive side. And that's an area that I just hear companies talk about all the time, like diversity, diversity, diversity. But where do we find them? Um, even more recently. There's been a lot of conversation in the wealth management space, right? With like Chase, JP Morgan Chase, and so forth, and them, and um, Uber's um, chief branding officer. Like everybody's talking about we need to get more diversity out there. So it's really cool that you guys are including that in. I want to dive a little bit. I want to talk about a diversity in AI when uh, as I'm talking to people and they're looking to fill these diversity positions, the word AI comes up. It's like, OK, we've got to we need to do something different in order to find this talent. Do you guys use a lot of AI or do you find it? Or maybe a better question is, do you find AI to be very helpful in the recruitment and staffing industry for finding for people in in areas that are really hard to fill? 
Well, we are we are using some AI technologies and we've piloted some others. So the first part is on the the job posting. We did do we done we done some pilots and kind of looked at um, Textio. Mm -hmm. And Textio has some, uh, you know, it's basically kind of a combination of engineers and linguists that <laughs> form that company out of Seattle. Textio will look at your job postings and make sure they're written junior, uh, gender neutral and, uh, you know, more neutral in general. So sometimes you might be starting with your job posting and it could be excluding just by the way it's written, either for gender diversity or even minority diversity. So uh, you, we don't... You, you know, we didn't, we, we haven't really gone beyond just kind of piloting, but we learned a lot in that process. And how are we communicating mm -hmm. the jobs that we're recruiting? Um, we've used Hiring Solve um, quite a bit in lead generation and sourcing. And I really love that tool. And the thing that Hiring Solve does is it searches thousands upon thousands of uh, upon data points super fast wow. and wow. learns based on what you kind of teach it and coach it. The thing that it did for us is it really, in markets that we don't understand, it can help us really quickly learn those synonyms. And, you know, it also kind of helps eliminate some of that unintentional bias that you might have when you're creating those searches or selecting candidates. Um, it was kind of bringing us back some people on one search that we were like, why is it bringing these people back? <laughs> right. And once we looked into it, we were like, wow, this candidate's really good. And so we were going into the market doing like what we normally do, just a full on aggressive sourcing strategy that included diversity search strings, that included, you know, technical keywords, that included the business keywords. And we ended up sourcing um, a, a vice president, one of our engineering areas that his initial resume, we probably wouldn't have looked at more from that. It just didn't seem to align technically with what we were looking at. Mm -hmm. But hiring solved because it was kind of comparing different data points so much more quickly than a human could, it brought this person back and we're like, wait a minute, it must be bringing them back because it, you know, they're listing out, you know, all of their work in asset management and facilities engineering. And it's just a different take than how we would. And um, that person is actually a, was a, was a minority hire at a VP level. Um, and, and I think that what hiring solved helped us to do was look at the talent pool just from a skill set perspective, differently than we would have. And the result was we got a top quality candidate who happens to also be um, a minority. So wow. that, that's an example. Now, the, we've, we've looked at some, you know, we've kind of looked at some tools like Intello. They kind of have their diversity search built in. We've looked at uh, SeekOut. That's a new one coming on the market that also has a diversity, some functions of diversity search built in. They, they work really well. Um, we have we've we've just piloted seek out. We do we do maintain uh, at least one license with Intello and we've used that. But all, all of our recruiting team uh, are CDR certified through AIRS. They're really good at doing Boolean search strings in, in um, you know, on the Web. And so a lot of times they can dive a little bit deeper than some of those tools from a diversity focus that we might today. Yeah. But I, I think some of the biggest opportunity in AI, though, is getting some of those biases cleaned out that you don't know that you have. And it's not necessarily a um, target, a bias that's focused, say, minority or women. It's just maybe the way you're going about writing that search string. It's the skill sets you're looking for that are unintentionally screening people out. And, and, and an AI gives you a little bit different focus and a different look at the skill sets. And so I think that's helped us. And we didn't intend, we didn't think about it initially from a diversity focus, but it has helped from that perspective as well. That's a, a that's something I would have never even thought of, you know, just even thinking of AI using it from a biased perspective. And it makes me wonder, like, how are my job descriptions? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I writing my job descriptions out in, in a biased manner? So I definitely want to check some of those tools out and we'll list the links in the description below so that you guys can go and check those tools out as well. We are you are listening to StaffingStartup.tv. My name is Dee Williams. I am your host. We have our special guest, Scott Sherman, Director of Talent Acquisition at Sodexo. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Attention all registered nurses, physicians, and healthcare professionals. The healthcare industry has a high demand for workers. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects 5 million new jobs in healthcare between 2012 and 2022, mainly due to the aging population, number of people needing healthcare, and replacing 
replacing retired workers. There's a major talent shortage, and you know the talent that companies are looking for. It's time to start thinking about your very own niche recruitment and staffing agency business. From startup through launch, let Staffingpreneurs Academy show you how. Learn more at staffingpreneursacademy.com slash healthcare. That's staffing, P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S, academy.com slash healthcare right now. All right, we are back. Y'all know I get so fired up when we start talking about recruitment and staffing and then you add technology on top of that and I'm like ah, right <laughs> and so this is one of my favorite conversations that are taking place right now with Scott Sherman director of talent acquisition at Sodexo Scott has such a vast background he's worked both in staffing and now he is working on the internal side and the corporate side so he gets to see things from both perspectives he's a lover of AI and um and then also Scott I just have to ask you really quickly like what do you think about the the uh, the transformation of applicant tracking systems that are taking place right now like it's pretty phenomenal that all the things that are going on from a technology perspective with the recruitment, would you agree? Absolutely. And it, you have this kind of movement to what we've kind of in, in the CRM and ATS, we kind of joke around, kind of show the, a little bit of the, the geeks in us. And we say the one ring to rule them all, you know, kind of the Lord of the Rings reference where a lot of people want an ATS and a CRM that's all one system. You're not going back and forth. But one of the challenges is, is I don't know that the ATS players really fully have understood the CRM space. Yeah. And some of the CRM players don't really understand a lot of the compliance and the and the the really rigidity rigidity, I guess yeah. that, is that, the, <laughs> that you need in a CRM. I mean, you get a company that's a federal contractor and they're hiring thousands of people a year a, a year. They need a, an ATS that's reliable that is going to hold up in court. Right. When you're out in the CRM though, you're in the gray, you're in this creative space. You're yeah. that's where I love to live because you're out there, you can try stuff. You can, you know, mix, experiment. You don't want to go experiment in your ATS. Right. So, so we're kind of going through a disruption right now because, you know, recruiters are saying, I don't want to go in 5 million different systems. Yeah. And yeah. Candidates are logging in and creating a talent community profile. Then they got to log in again and apply in an ATS, and it's yeah. it's just a bad experience. So, got it. We got to we got to get some changes now. When you layer in artificial intelligence, um, now you're getting into. If you go to a, it, you have to mirror consumer experiences. Like when you're going to go, if you're going to go purchase something on Amazon or, you know, just about any site, there's a chat bot that can help you. There's there's different things that can happen. And if you don't have that type of experience in your job application process, it can be frustrating for candidates because it's a gap in their expectations. Yet, I was reading, I think it was Smashfly, which is one of the CRM companies. They um, have some great stuff. They'd released, a, they did a nice study, a three-year study. And in 2017, like only 1% of Fortune 500 companies had a chat bot or something like that in their career site. Now they said in 2018, that number is going to go up dramatically, right, of but a ATSs have to think differently. Like, wow, when you go to a career site, which a lot of your career site, a lot of times it, inter it interacts so much with your ATS. If you don't have some of these AI components, someone like a chat bot that can help you. And even the chat bot that can stay with you throughout the entire process. So you saw ISIMs, ISIMS is a great ATS. That's who we use. They purchased Text Recruit. Yes, they did. Text Recruit has a chatbot. It has a lot of functionality. I've talked with the folks at Oracle, Oracle HCM. They have a lot of artificial intelligence that they're interweaving within that. And then you've got some great companies like Paradox. It has Olivia, which is an assistant that can help you throughout the process and will integrate with a lot of ATS and CRM. So I think you'll see a big digital disruption going on right now. The, the challenge is, Companies didn't budget for that, right? Companies budgeted for ATS, they budgeted for CRM, they budgeted for their marketing, you know, to go post jobs. And now you've got all this AI interweaving and you're not getting rid of the other stuff. Right. You're just all putting in AI. And so it's, you know, we're having to think differently about how do we, how do we budget? How do we integrate AI in a way that we can afford in a way that gets us an ROI? And it, we're not in a position where, you know, you, 
say replace people it you know you you because you still need people to go out and source recruit and manage the relationship so it's it does make things a better candidate experience it does make for more efficient sourcing but it's a need that's been a long time coming because we're already behind the game and just meeting the demand of hiring right now The Staffing Startup.tv podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions. Although we're licensed and authorized, we don't provide financial advice. So please consider your own situation or get advice before you make any decision based on anything in our podcast. Visit Staffing Startup.tv to learn more about how we're regulated or access our terms and conditions. Yeah. Yeah, that and and I think that we do have some companies that are playing in that space. Loxo um, is doing some amazing things with AI. They have a, a CRM and ATS integrated. Um, their um, job adder is has a CRM ATS. Crelate has a um, a CRM ATS. So there are some newer companies that are definitely coming up and looking to. Um, to really give companies like Bullhorn and iSims and, you know, a run for their money. They're trying to come in and, and I, th- I think everybody sees the gap, right? Um, but I do think you bring up a very valid question. When you start adding in the well- bells and whistles, that price tag goes up. It's like, oh, you know. And um, so that's definitely something that folks should think about. Well, I have one final question. Like, you're absolutely amazing. And... um. You know, and this is really more for the the people that are aspiring to provide value to companies like yours. Like Sodexo is an amazing brand, right? And um, and even though it, you guys may not use agencies that much, when you need a partner, someone out there is saying, "I want to be that one to be able to provide that value." What is the one thing that you can tell a a newbie or, you know, about working with, you know, a company such as yours? Like, what's that one thing that they should do before they ever pick up the phone, before they ever open their vocal cords? But, you know, what's the one thing that you feel like they should do? So I, I think as much as they can, understanding the structure and that's something that when I was at Volt, I, I would never have understood. A big company like Sodexo is, is and, and our, I'm sure companies just like us that are similar size, there are so many layers, there are so many complexities, there are so many needs within a company like Sodexo. But if you are, say, cold calling in to someone that doesn't have any influence or doesn't have any focus on what you're, you're, what you would help with, you know, don't take that as, oh, got the wrong person, just hang up. Just take every opportunity as a, a little bit of learning. Okay, great. What do you do? Tell me a little bit about how you, if you can get somebody in the phone and they're going to talk to you. So what what keeps you up at night? Mm-hmm. What What is your staffing need? And even if it's not something you can service right away, you're going to learn a little bit about that structure and make a human connection. But it's kind of like when you're sourcing candidates. When you go to talk to a candidate, you talk about them first, right? right? You talk about them, you understand what they want, what are their needs. And then you start to layer in what you might be recruiting for. It's kind of the same when you go to talk to can to companies, get them to talk about them, understand their structure, and then start to see where's your angle, where, how can you help? Where are you going to come in? And it may not be that person, but they might be able to get you to that person or at least point you in another direction in your research. So just take it all as a learning opportunity. And it, it's a process it's iterative. You kind of keep circling back and expanding out until you finally get to that person that's like, oh, I've been waiting for you all along. I have five jobs and I can't fill them. Where have you been all my life? Right. Yeah, <laughs> you'll find them. But you just got to understand that big companies are very complex. Yeah. And it's just a lot of layers. You just may not be connecting with that right person. You might not have found that need yet, but but keep at it because it is out there, especially yeah. in this market. I mean, we're looking at unemployment rates in some of our key markets of 2%. I mean, anything anything under 4%, you're asked, you're full employment. Anything and anything under 4%, you're trying to get people to go to work that don't want to work. (laughs) So it's, I mean, that's the reality right now. So there is a huge need for people to help recruit and find talent. And so you're in a hot spot right now and you're valued and you're really, it's, it's a great, it's a great place to be. Just kind of keep that bigger picture in mind. So, well, I really that's... appreciate you so much. I know you've got to go, but first of all, you have to promise that you will come back. Will you come back? Sure. 
Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Sherman, Director of Talent Acquisition at Sodexo. So thankful, so humbled that you were here. Thank you so much for your time, energy, and your talent. Scott, you are so much appreciated by our community. Well, thank you. Thanks for reaching out. It was fun to do. Thank you. Thanks. It's, uh, really quickly, do, would you like to share how people can contact you? Sure. You can uh, on Twitter, Scott in like Neil Sherman on Twitter. Um, or, you know, I think it's Scott Sherman. SPHR is my LinkedIn one. So any reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm happy to connect. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks again, Scott, for being here. Having a phenomenal day. Thanks for listening to the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you'd like more information on any of our stories or would like to know how to get involved and share your story, head over to our website at staffingstartup.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and please leave a five-star rating and a super awesome review so others can enjoy the show too. Check out the live video footage on YouTube. Have a great week and we'll see you next episode.